Welcome to the seats. Um, so now we are starting the pharmaceutical product design session in collaboration with the APV. And uh, we will talk about insights on product and process design as it messes for the pharmaceutical later stages. And um, the first speaker is Dr. Andreas Wagner. Um, who he will talk about the LNP production for mRNA vaccines, therapeutics for gene editing, proof of concept for a versatile process. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks the organizers for inviting me to, to give some uh, insight onto the journey we have been in over the last years. And uh, let's start that uh, we don't delay it. So I'm working at a Polymon Scientific. It's a private company located uh, in Austria, very close to Vienna. Uh, we are currently around uh, 100 employees there. And uh, we have been uh, working in two main business areas. One is the CDMO activity for uh, biopharmaceuticals. And this is the older part of the company, but it gives us a lot of things to learn uh, during these years, which we can apply on the second part uh, of the business of the company, which is LMP and liposomal formulation development and production for early clinical stages. And we are in the lucky position uh, that we have been also producing for the market for the COVID vaccines. Uh, next to these uh, mRNA uh, activities, we are also working uh, over the last years, starting with oligonucleotides, uh, mRNA uh, for, for therapeutics, and recently also moved into the uh, uh, gene editing area. Next to this, we are still working on a lot of liposomal adjuvants, but here uh, the story I will tell is mainly related uh, to the activities during the pandemic, where we have been uh, working closely uh, with these companies listed here, it was a lot of work, but uh, at that time we identified there is no one else who can do it, who uh, has uh, been working uh, in the GMP production uh, of, of LMPs during that period. Uh, in November 2020, this was an article in the Wall Street Journal where we are very proud of. Uh, and uh, this was related to the fact that Polymon has been producing all the clinical trial material for the biotech Pfizer trial, but also for CureVac, AstraZeneca. And as you can imagine, we have been working with other companies as well, where we are not allowed to speak about here. How could this happen that a company like Polymon uh, is involved in these activities? And this is related to the fact that already at the late 90s of the last century, early 2000s, uh, we developed an, an ethanol injection method very similar to the technology uh, which is used now in, in the tea mixing processes uh, for, for mRNA, LMP manufacture, but also in the past for uh, oligonucleotide encapsulation into LMPs. We have originally developed this process for liposomes. And as you can see here, this is our mixing device. Uh, we have uh, lipid ethanol is passed through a very thin bore in this orifice and uh, gets in contact with the aqueous phase. And with this technology, uh, we have very good under control the, the particle size, size distribution for these liposomes, which is nowadays much easier through the chemistry of, of these LMPs uh, to generate uh, very uniform uh, uh, particles. And when you look at the liposomes and the lipid nanoparticle, although the structure is, is different, but uh, the components are the same, and, and therefore it's, it's very logic that the process to produce uh, both different uh, sister particles, as we heard over the last days, uh, in the same uh, technology. When you look at these LNP processes, I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but in brief, you have your lipid uh, components solubilized in ethanol. They are combined under uh, specific, uh, very defined conditions with the uh, mRNA or, or let's say uh, oligonucleotide, whatever comes at acidified pH. We have an online dilution step 
uh, and this intermediate LNP uh, suspension is collected, followed by a TFF process where the ethanol has to be removed, where the acidified buffer is replaced by a neutral one, and don't forget about it, also to concentrate to a specific target concentration. The subsequent concentration adjustment by buffer dilution and uh, uh, cryoprotectant addition uh, leads to the final bulk drug product, which is then uh, sterile filled and uh, transferred into the valves. Uh, when we speak about uh, the achievements uh, during this period, we at Polymoon uh, had set up the process. We have started, uh, especially I'm speaking here for the BioNTech Pfizer program, with 10 different vaccines uh, for TOC studies. Five of them were produced for, to initiate clinical trials. For two of them, we produced the, the total amount needed to go to finalize uh, phase three trials. We have been involved in the analytical method validations, multiple uh, multi-center process validations, and as you can imagine, we have also been part of these IND, IMPD filings, so it's also the regulatory support where we were in. During 21, uh, we, we stopped uh, with these activities since the, the partners in this project have already ramped up their production, cap production capacities. When you look into these uh, uh, activities, a lot of that is listed here has been provided to us from our friends from Acuitas, uh, because I think it's over, always very important to mention it's the Acuitas formulation, because many times you hear it's the, the, the Pfizer formulation, but I think it's, it's very important to, to give them also uh, these, uh, uh, the, the place where they are. When you look into the LMP process, Originally, it was transferred to us on a 100 milligram scale, and we had to uh, optimize the process uh, in a way uh, to, uh, to work on, uh, to, to generate LMPs also at a larger scale. We optimized the TFF processes. We had to take care about the loading ratio, drug product per uh, TFF membrane, shear rate uh, uh, optimization, etc., etc. And we also had to take care about the bulk and sterile filtration of, of these LMPs, which is different from uh, uh, 0.2 micron filtration of a clear uh, solution. So there's also some know-how necessary to not run into any clogging issues. Uh, our biggest uh, effort was during this time to, to work on, on scale up. This process was originally set up to produce or formulate one gram mRNA in LMPs within 45 minutes. And target was to, to uh, speed up the process to have one gram formulated within one minute and, or less than one minute. And this could be done by starting, by increasing the start concentrations of RNA uh, in the aqueous phase and the corresponding lipids in ethanol, increasing the flow rates. And this was the upscale. The outscale was running multiple mixing lines in parallel. The TFF process was, uh, if you are aware that when you keep shear rate, loading rate constant, you increase uh, the filter area. And for sure, you have to take care that your pumps uh, can uh, go for this uh, capacity that is needed. Sterile filtration process has been scaled up in a similar way, keeping the loading rate similar, going for much larger capsules. This was the past. Now we have some more time uh, looking into uh, some more optimization in this field. I will give some examples on the uh, points listed here. Uh, an example for the impact of the mRNA buffer uh, used for LMP formation, uh, flow rates, uh, different uh, mixing units, different mixing angles, but also last but not least, uh, using different pumps for these uh, mixing processes. Here's an example of, of a typical uh, LMP uh, formulation where we have the mRNA on the left side uh, in a pH 4 buffer, on the right side in a pH 6 buffer, same buffer components, uh, same molarity, and what you see here is uh, after the LMP formation process, particles look very similar, but then during the TFF step, 
uh, there is a change in particle size and polydispersity, so the, buff the buffer itself has an impact on the particle that you generate. And another take-home message, the LMP formation is not uh, finalized at the mixing step, also pro process the material until the end uh, with TFF and 0.2 micron filtration to see what you have prepared. Another uh, thing we are looking into is, since microfluidics is very popular and a lot of uh, research uh, labs and, and companies are using this type, so we looked into uh, microfluidic, different kind of, of uh, easily available uh, microfluidic chips, but we also looked into this T-mixer, which is described as impingement jet mixer by Knauer, but also simple T or Y pieces. And what we also looked into, is there an impact on the angles where you bring this uh, ethanol and aqueous phase in contact? What you see here, this is a uh, very, or rather old data. We compared uh, early data from Peter Kalles lab. It's a simple POPC uh, formulation, uh, which, where he published the data on, on particle size. Uh, and, and size distribution, and we looked into this in comparison to other uh, chip system and to our mixing device uh, compared to this uh, herringbone uh, structured microfluidic device, uh, which was set up by Peter Kallis and his uh, team. What we also looked into is since a lot of our customers come to us with early stage developments in the, uh, using microfluidics, uh, we compared data generated in their labs, and this time this is also not the, the newest data, this was with, with this very small uh, scale uh, microfluidic device at that time, and we compared it to our injection system. Very easy, four lipid compounds, target size PDI, the target API concentration, uh, which was uh, aimed by our customer. We process this in our systems for sure, that's why it's, it's, uh, we can run this at a much larger scale. In the meantime, these microfluidic systems are also available in systems which can go at higher flow rates. But here there's a huge difference, at least for this uh, research tool and our technology from an output related to the flow rate, but also uh, with the start concentration of, of RNA and, and lipids at that time. TFF process 0.2 micron filtration after formation. We have seen an increase of, of output uh, during a specific time for, for this batch. But more, even more important, you see particle size, polydispersity, uh, encapsulation efficiency very similar. For sure, the, the main difference is, but for this specific setup, the production time. What we also look into, and this is uh, specifically now, since we are looking for downscaling the process, thinking of uh, personalized uh, medicine or uh, some, some often drug application in the gene editing field. We look at different pumps uh, next to the uh, piston pumps uh, mainly used in this field and different uh, mixing devices with, where we check if the different uh, mixing angles have an impact. And what we see here, there, there is uh, an uh, impact uh, on this particle quality, especially when you go to much lower flow rates, which might be necessary if you just want to go for 10 or 20 milligram uh, mRNA input uh, during uh, GMP production of an individualized product. For uh, encapsulation efficiency, uh, it's, it's all relatively good comparable. Uh, Maybe the one in the second line is an outlier, but we have to look into this as well. You need a, a set of uh, analytical methods in place to deeply look into this, and here is an overview of, of some standard uh, methods, ribogreen assay for RNA content and encapsulation efficiency. Over the years, there have also been implemented uh, different HPLC methods. You can also look uh, into uh, degradation products as well. Very important to look into mRNA integrity by capillary electrophoresis. When it comes to self-amplifying RNA, we use gel electrophoresis. All the other methods uh, should not be new. Uh, 
And by this, we have a very good production history. You can imagine the last uh, three years have been extremely busy. But yeah, there was nothing else to do during that time. So it was, I think, uh, the best we could do. Polymoon can also make fill and finish of your product. So we have, especially for early stage programs, a capacity of up to 8,000 vials per batch. We can also do, if necessary, freeze drying, which might become very important in the future when it comes to uh, increasing the stability of mRNA LMPs, self-amplifying RNA, for instance, as well. Additional services, and by this, I'm in time, and I want to thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hart.